director and program manager of the Toucan Ridge Ecology and Education Society, TREE. Um, we've established this organization to help conserve the region's cultural and natural heritage. Oh, let me start again. <laughs> Most of these university courses are 15 to 20 students. We have a combination of a company that provides logistical travel support and educational planning, and of course, the facilities that we offer here at TREES. We have on-site biologists that can offer teaching assistance to professors, uh, so we can assist you in your teaching if you need that assistance. We also have all the field equipment that you can set up to use for sampling the animals that you're trying to study. And of course, we have beautiful, wonderful facilities to house you and also to feed you awesome food. <laughs> oh, food's been great. Yes, I'm putting on weight. All right, so uh, Dr. Graham Forbes, I'm a professor of mainly wildlife studies at the University of New Brunswick. Belize is a great place for a field course. It has a variety of wildlife, of habitat types. It has ocean, jungle, a safe environment to travel in. It's so green and it's hot. It's just great. So yeah, very hot. <laughs> Trees is a great spot because it has a trail network. So from a teaching point of view, we don't have to worry so much about students getting lost. They're paired up. The course theme is experience, hands-on immersion. So we really don't want them spending the whole time with us listening to the professors. We want them out there exploring. We set up uh, live traps for small mammals. And we caught a Mexican mouse possum. It was amazing little frisky creature. It was very difficult to keep it in the bag. It just wanted to bite everyone. Except in one part of Canada, there aren't any marsupial species, so a possum is a fairly unique thing. He was adorable. Being able to get up close to them is it's awesome. You get to look at their tail length and understand how they use that to help themselves climb and move around. Uh, there's a mist nets run at night for bats. Oh, <laughs> sweet mother of pearl. I know, he's oh, alive. alive. There's mist nets run for birds as part of the banding station here. For a lot of these students, they've never had a chance to really hold wildlife. They read about it in books, and this is so much better because they can realize how light a bird is, the shape of the beak and the, the shape of the wings. And so they're able to see things they wouldn't normally pick up on. The birds in here are crazy. We saw one today with a big thing on its head. It was amazing. It's cool seeing the birds that you see back home that have migrated all this way. They're just so little, they fit right in your hand. So I'm going to take my picture because I look like an idiot. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. The other night, we went for a herp walk with Vanessa. At nighttime, Belize is such a different place. Suddenly, we had to walk through this river. <laughs> so it's something you don't do every day, is walk up a creek in the jungle. We got to walk through a river at night in Belize where there are snakes hanging from the trees. <laughs> and we didn't die, so... Trees has a lot of things to look at, but there's also some nearby sites that vary. So there's a uh, river, the City River. We were snorkeling in there. There's different fish species. Snorkeling in Belize is just awesome. I mean, it's really, really hot here. And just being able to jump in the water in there and get refreshed. We've lined up a group that takes us up river with the spot beams and you never know what you see. This year we saw a couple of kinkajous and uh, juvenile more or less crocodiles, just small ones. The other aspect of that trip is a bioluminescent lake. Seeing the bioluminescent lake was something that I've always dreamed about. I learned about it in class. Uh, the students jumped in and swam around and got to see the water light up all around them so it's pretty magical. So we were all terrified to jump in the water because it was cold and it was nighttime. We couldn't see anything. It feels so cold! <laughs> yeah, lots of giggling. <laughs> like you jump in and they, they light up and it's like out of a movie. It was spectacular. It was glowing all around us. Yeah. It was the coolest experience of my life. It was so cool. We went to the Five Blues Lakes. There were so many really cool trees. There were some with spikes like that long and some that were poisonous. We had tracks of ocelot, mountain lion, Baird's taper, uh, which is really quite special. Well, we are fortunate to come across a very small but um, poisonous snake, fair de lance, but it shows how well camouflaged they are. And there were vines hanging everywhere. It looked like the Jungle Book. Yeah, it did look like the Jungle Book. <laughs> Duente Caves, uh, it's a karst topography, so there's sinkholes and there's this little tunnels you can crawl through. You got to crawl through them and see bats, and it was awesome. <laughs> There's also St. Herman's, which is this massive cave that apparently goes on for miles and miles. 
into the into the earth, which is really interesting. So for biologists and ecologists to come down to a place like this, they get a real feel for diversity and adaptation and uh, the sort of co-evolution of different things. Trees is a great place to get introduced to Belize. It's a wonderful location. Accommodations are so cool. They're little cabins yeah. in the jungle. <laughs> you wake up to the mountain behind you, birds singing, insects making noise. It, it's awesome. Um, wait, before anything happens, I forgot to do something. I have to do it really fast. Ah, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't donate <laughs> yet. I have to make it Davinci now. I messed up. Scuff streamer. Yeah, Dobbins, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this is the third time you've been on the podcast, and I think I'm a little too comfortable because I am not prepared whatsoever. I'm also, uh exhausted um and i will explain more of why that's the case when dobbins comes on because it's something he'll want to hear about as well uh today Ooh. okay we're all set today we're we're talking to uh dr michael dobbins you guys probably know who he is by now he came on my podcast for the first time back in what november Something like that. Um, and he's a quantitative ecologist. He's also a professor at UC Davis. Uh, when he first came on my podcast, he invited me and Matt to go to Belize with him because he travels to Belize a lot um, and does a lot of research there uh, on lots and lots of different species. So we did that. Uh, the We posted some nice, Cindy, thank you. Um, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. So, and now I lost my train of thought because he's CS. Dobbins is going to start playing CS, by the way. Okay, so we went to Belize with, with Dobbins. Um, me and Matt went with Dobbins and his friend John and, um, and our friend uh, Callie, and we got to stay at Trees, which is the organization that we're raising money for today. So the podcast today was supposed to be with, like I told you guys, it was going to be with a BBC photographer. She is going to come on the podcast, but she's getting her PhD and she has deadlines to hit. So she asked to reschedule, um, but that actually came at a really good time because Trees is really, really struggling because of COVID. Um, they need a lot of help to stay afloat. Uh, uh, like with a lot with a lot of organizations um, because of COVID, so we're raising money for them today, and they're really special. We stayed good back at Flandre. Right? We stayed with them for a few days when we were in Belize in the jungle. It's beautiful out there. We went and uh, did some some bat identification. We got to see their mist nets. We went on some herp walks. We saw armadillos. We saw skunks. We saw um toucans we saw lots and lots of cool stuff and they were really 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 good to us there so i'm really excited to be raising money for them today I'm, we're also going to talk to dobbins about uh, more stuff about trees today two cans of what right weeb thank you for the five dollars res thank you for the sub um that's who we're raising money for today you can do command org if you're uh if you're interested in seeing more about about what trees is about and we'll have dobbins tell you more about that as well Today, we struggled a little bit with finding out what to talk about. Dobbins has a lot to talk about because he's a professor and he knows lots of things. So he'll probably talk a lot and I'll just sit here and be like, oh, how cool. I didn't know that. Um, we thank you so much. Uh, so we'll do that. I have a lot of updates for you guys with, uh, with the animals. Um, and yeah. Lizzie, thank you for the eight months. Am I missing anything? I don't think there will be a quiz. Dobbins has already written up quiz questions. That's the other thing is he's gonna stream after this to continue fundraising for uh, to continue fundraising for trees. So we'll host him at the end. He'll he'll continue doing a charity stream. Um and yeah, we'll talk to him. 
I don't know if I'm missing anything. I think that I'm good. Yeah, the quiz is at the end. Same same rules apply. I'll donate $5 or you'll get a sub to my channel or somebody else's channel. Um, where do I donate? Uh, you can, I mean, you can go down into my panels if you want. It'll, donating to my stream will, will send it to Dobbins, who will send it to Vanessa, who uh, was the woman in the video. There you can do command tip. There you go. So, let's call Dobbins. I am probably missing something, but we'll figure it out when he's here, because that's okay, because he's a friend and he knows that I'm a scuff streamer. Yo. Yo. Oh God, I I hear I gotta mute the stream. Oh yes. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I can't see you. Oh now I can see you. Why wait on Discord? You should be able to see me on Discord. No, no, I see you on stream now. We're good. What's okay, up, guys? Sick. Hello, everybody. We're here. Wow, podcast. We're at ten dollars. Okay. So, like every other podcast, can I have you, even though a lot of them know who you are, can you introduce yourself and can you uh, give a little intro on what Trees is, what they're donating to? Sure. So, um, hopefully you guys know me by now, but if you don't... Oh, Doc, uh, sip the $100. You... Oh. <laughs> Seriously, dude? Yeah. You're insane. What oh, the hell? Um, Rash and Ram. Wow, dude. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so um, you guys can call me Dobbins or Dobby or whatever. Um, that's fine. Uh, I'm a spatial and quantitative ecologist, which means I use math to um, basically quantify the natural world, and I use it to map out different um, home ranges and activity patterns and all kinds of things for different endangered species. And the ultimate goal is to understand um, how these species move, interact with their environment, interact with people so that we can make better conservation plans uh, for these species. So I use math in a fun way, hopefully, um, to help uh, these species with conservation. So that's my boring intro. Um, on trees, so mine did a really good job of telling you guys about trees. Um, and you watched kind of the intro video with um, some of the students uh, and the professor that went down there and took their students down there. But basically, they are an environmental education and research organization in Belize. They're a nonprofit. Um, and basically what they do is they, um, they host student groups that come down. So different college professors will bring their classes down and they'll do um, field courses for these students. Um, they'll also do courses for local students in Belize. So there's a couple small local universities in Belize and they'll host their students there, um, which is really, really important to be able to teach uh, the local um, students in, in the natural, uh, in their natural environment, um, things about ecology, uh, biology, conservation. Um, and then they also do research. So they do both. So they do education on one side and on the other side, they do research. So they have research projects going on with uh, bird banding. Um, so a lot of different bird species, uh, and we'll watch a couple videos, I think I send them to Maya, um, of some of the bird species that are there. And a lot of the bird species migrate. Uh, so in the winter, um, a lot of these species from the U.S. and even Canada will fly down um, and spend the winter in Belize. And what they do is they catch these birds, and we'll see it in the video, um, and they put bands on the birds so that we can uh, track them. Um, and so when somebody else catches those birds, maybe in the U.S. or Canada, um, during the summers, they can see uh, which birds are making the journey, how long that they've uh, been going back and forth. Um, they can get a lot of different data on these different birds and what species are making the journey. So they do a lot of bird banding. Uh, they do something similar with bats. Um, there's a lot of different bat species in Belize. I think there's like 40 to 60 different bat species there, um, which is a lot. Um, and then they also do research on different uh, reptiles, frogs, turtles, um, a little bit of snake stuff. 
Um, so they have a, a lot of really cool research projects going on. Um, and in the jungle, there's a lot of, uh, and Maya and Matt uh, and John, I don't know if John's around, kind of saw this uh, firsthand. Like when you go to the jungle, maybe the first thing you expect is to see all these big charismatic animals mm -hmm. um, like you would see in Africa, but you don't um, because they tend to hide. But in the jungle, what you do have that you don't have in sort of the plains of Africa is the millions of small animals that are everywhere. So everything from the different insects to um, amphibians to reptiles to birds, you are completely surrounded by uh, diversity uh, at all times. So they do a lot of research on the smaller uh, animals, the birds, the bats, the, the amphibians, reptiles. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what they do. And then with coronavirus, um, they're basically screwed right now for funding because most of their income uh, comes from the student groups that come down to visit them. So when a professor brings um, their class to come down, that's a huge boost of income for uh, their organization. Uh, and pretty much they're, they're probably their main source of income is, is support from these universities. Um, and Belize has completely blocked travel from people from outside countries. And even if they didn't, people from outside countries aren't coming anyways. Um, so for the past however many months and for the foreseeable future, they basically have like next to zero income. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not the only, I, I, one of the things that hit me the most is when I started talking to Vanessa about this, um, was that I realized how many other nonprofits must be in like the same dire yeah. situation. Um, not only because of lack of visitors, but nonprofits that completely rely on donations and people um, are really struggling with money right now. And mm -hmm. so they don't have enough extra money to send uh, to the charities that they would normally support. So nonprofits everywhere are really feeling the hurt right now, but especially ones that rely on tourism uh, because right. it's basically yeah. zero income. So, uh, so yeah, so I wanted to do some, whatever I could to kind of help them out because they're a really good organization, good people. Um, and so that's why I came to mind with this idea to support them um, and hopefully uh, help them out. The good thing about Belize is that the cost of living there is really, really low. And so their expenses actually are really, really low. Mm -hmm. um, so to support for them to get by for the next year, um, all they need in U.S. dollars is like $20,000 to make it through a year, which seems like a really small number for an organization to make for it through sure. a year. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, like every little bit, like the normal amount that Maya gets through her stream, like that is a significant portion of what they would need. Yeah. Uh, there would be like a full, almost a full month or, you know, part of a month's uh, funds that they would need. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of a background on them, what they're going through. Uh, and kind of why I brought this to Maya for us to chat about. Yeah, good support. timing. Um, we got a bunch more donations uh, that came in while you were talking. We got G2 with the dollar, Disco with $20, Ram with $10, Jen with 3 Conch with 11 Danny with ten twenty nine, and Ava with 20 We're at $186. And wow, nine thanks, guys. Nine cents. Thank you guys so much. That's um, insane. Yeah, and thank you for that intro. That was good. Maya cool. knows how to... Okay, I'm getting very distracted. I'm really tired. Dobbins, I have something that I have to tell chat that I also haven't told you. <laughs> Is it sad? No. Well, okay, let's start with the kind of sad thing. I have the two raccoons. Everybody knows that, right? Um, one of them is not doing... Buffkin is not doing very well. Um, he started throwing up yesterday, and he's just not putting on weight. He's gained, like, like 50 grams in the past week, which is not enough. Um, he spit up twice when I was trying to formula feed him yesterday. Um, so I took him into the clinic this morning and I was given two options. She told me that she's concerned that it's just failure to thrive, which is just when the babies just don't gain weight and they just, they don't do well and that happens. Um, but the options that she gave me were I could send the two home, the two raccoons home with her and she could put them in with her babies and just hope that he starts eating with them and that he kind of, he kind of picks up the pace. The other option is I could bring them both home and just do super intensive care um, with him and just work really hard to, to put on weight. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so I have them both at home. Buffkin, Spoon, thanks for the $20. Um, Buffkin is now getting formula fed three times a day, anti-nausea medication twice a day, sub-Q fluids once a day, and probiotics once a day. Um, in addition to being offered solid foods throughout the day. Weed, thank you for the 15. 
Um, so that's a lot, but we'll see if he starts like, doing better. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's going on with him. There's your update. Uh, but yeah, he's not doing great. And the second update that I haven't told you about, I don't even know if I can get. Okay, Dobbins, entertain the chat for a minute, please. <laughs> Well, since you like videos, you could just play one. Okay, I'll play. But I want to Okay. I mean, I already watched them. Here, I'll play a video. Um, which, should I do the, uh... Should I, I'll do the bird... Since you three short... They're all bird videos, I think. I'll do the bird conservation Belize one. Oh, this one's so cool. Okay. Here you go, chat. Um... Today we're at the Chief yeah. Banding Station, she's new to streaming. and we are taking some interns... Wait, now there is Drown. Okay, I take it back. She knows what she's doing. Our main goals with that is to look at migrants, uh, so birds that are coming from North America, also long. Canada, U.S., and Mexico, uh, as they're here on their wintering grounds. And then we're also looking at resident birds. So when we catch a bird, we put a ban on it. Uh, that allows us to detect some things about its uh, how old they are, and then if we ban them here, then if we're lucky, somebody else is going to catch them in North America. And then that gives us really useful uh, information about the movement of the birds. So to do that, we measure the bird also, we measure the wing, we measure the tail, and then we write all that down in our little book, and then we send that to an office in North America where all the banding data goes. So that's what we're doing The bird today. banding that I was telling you guys about it's a good that they do. To have in it's really cool. And also, that's the way to do conservation even conservation through education and science. I mean, she picked a video that was like 30 seconds long. I'm sorry. I'm, hang on, I'm trying, I'm trying, hold on. Wait, I kind of want to watch that makeup video now. What is that? No, stop. You're embarrassing me. What? It's on your screen. Shut up. What do you watch when we're not around? It's not the same one. No, it's not. <laughs> what have you done? I still have the same one, okay? I have this one. I don't think you can. Can you see it? I don't know. Ugh. I have dip still. But yesterday, we got in another red tail that's just a little bit older, which makes him um, a problem, he's, he's trouble, because he's, like, fledging, so he's kind of flying, so now I really have my hands full, but I couldn't say no to this bird, because it gives them both a better chance, right, because they'll, they'll imprint on each other, so, chat, meet Dot. Nice. <laughs> nice, Luke. So, we have Dip and Dot, um, it's gonna, this is, it's a lot. So this is why I'm tired. <laughs> but I think he is like a week older or something like that. Um, maybe not even quite a week. But they're both doing good so far. Dip has been screaming at him. Oh my god. Dip, is in, Dip has been screaming at him because he thinks that he's gonna feed him. Um, so, yeah. But that's the update. I'll tell you guys more about it on the normal stream. Okay. Yeah, debate like that. I want to hear now. What do you mean? What else do you want to hear? I don't know. You said you had more to tell. That is that not enough? <laughs> is, that, is that not enough? To, is that not enough of an update for you? I have two hawks now instead of one. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, Dillard, thanks for the four months. Not stretchy with twenty dollars. Thank you. Um, 
birds on my monitor. Uh, That's pretty cool. Like, it is cool. That it, is it's cool. uh, I've never flown two birds at the same time, so it'll be a lot. Yeah. I, when is the zoo opening? I know. I actually have two hawks and two raccoons and two dogs in my house. Yeah, the best thing about you having two hawks and two raccoons is that we get the best end of that relationship because oh. we get to see like the cuteness of them and then you turn off the stream and we're done and you have to deal with like all the poop everywhere and the flying and whatever they do. Yes. Um, so it's the more animals you have, the better for us and the worse for you. True. Thank you for the observation, Robbins. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Anytime. I'm just here to help. Stop-footing me. Stop-footing me. Anyway. Um, That's really exciting, though. And yeah. it, actually, I mean, it's actually really good because it, I think it'll help the younger one out a lot. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it'll actually, it'll be way better for for, uh, for raising for the two together. It'll just be more yeah. work for me, but I don't know. I, it's good. It should be good. I'm stressed, yeah. but it should be good. <laughs> okay, what do you guys think of the video? Do you like it? There's one more video to see more birds. Um, I should get him on the podcast, but this guy that we met there um, filmed some really, really neat footage of all the different types of birds that are there, and I'll play that while I put them back. Second. Because I don't want to have this hawk just sitting on my monitor doing the podcast. Okay, here we go. What? Here. By the way, those things hunt bats. Pretty cool. that you can see like in a single day um, at trees. I think our record in one day was 50 different bird species in one day. So it's pretty insane the amount of diversity that they have there. And these are some pretty cool close-up shots. At 124 wasn't in one day. Nice. But still pretty cool. That the filming is so good. Yeah, it's um yeah, he does he does a really good job with it. And he's really dedicated. I don't know if you noticed when we were there, but he would go out like before the sun um would rise and then he would come back when it was dark. And that entire day he would be filming while we were off doing whatever. He I would just be that. out there by himself. Yeah. And that's why we never saw him like during yeah. the day. He was always out there filming. 
Nice. Um, I would go out there with my camera for like an hour and I was like, all right, this was fun. And then I would leave and, and he would just stay there for like another 12 hours. Raptor, thank you for the $5. Brokish? If you're who I think you are, hey, what's up? Thank you for the thank you for the three months. We're at two hundred and forty six dollars and eleven cents. Um, awesome guys, thanks. So lots of bird things, lots of bird updates for everybody. We got a lot of birds in our lives, which is exciting. Um, we didn't get to do much with birds when we were at trees, but we did. We did get to see a lot of bats. Um, we True. ID'd a lot. Well, I didn't ID Vanessa. ID bats. <laughs> Um, and that was so difficult. hard compared to bird ID. Bird ID is so easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, bad ID, you have to get out like this 36 page key and then like look over all these different details while you're holding the bat. And then it's still hard. Like I remember like we were debating whether one actually had chin warts because if it had chin warts or not, then we could flip the page and go to the next set of keys because mm -hmm. then it falls under bats with chin warts. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really random the things that you, uh, that you used to ID bats, whereas birds are so much easier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the I don't know if you know this, but Matt, who is like the co-director of uh, Trees, um, not your Matt, different Matt. Right. Um, he's the bird guy, and he wasn't there, so we couldn't. You have to have the specific license to do the bird banding. Uh, so they didn't have anybody there that could do it. Um, but Vanessa does the bat at work, so we were able to do with bats. But if we go back in the future and Matt's there, then we can do the, the bird banding, which would be really cool. Sick. Speaking of going yeah. back in the future, I know that there's obvious, there's nothing that we know. Do you want to talk about what we've talked about or do you want to wait to talk about that stuff? Now that you just debated Chad, I have they to They can say, deal with I? a debate, but yeah, if, I would love to talk to them about it. Even if, they, even if we tell them that it's not, I mean, nothing is certain, we don't know, but... All right, well, you should put it out there. I have no choice now. Yep, you're cornered. Tell them. Yeah. That's like telling like a, a little kid, like, do you want to tell them what we got them for Christmas? No? All right, we'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> like, you, you literally, you can't do it. Okay. So, um, yeah, so one of the things that Trees is thinking about doing um, to uh, earn some extra income during this time while they're having a hard time getting income is talking to some of their research partners or friends or whoever um, to see if they kind of want to invest in some of their um, invest in some buildings and cabins and research labs for uh, their friends and researchers to use personally, but also to sort of donate uh, to trees so that they can use those facilities and rent them out when they're not there. So basically, um, Maya and I might donate or uh, invest into getting a cabin uh, there at Trees um, where we can visit whenever we want and stream. Um, and so I didn't tell Maya this, so this is news for Maya. So uh, I had Vanessa do a speed test um, at one of the areas where the cabins would be. Mm -hmm. And she actually, I have no idea how, but on her 4G, she had a 30 uh, meg upload and download speed. Really? At trees on her 4G. So streaming is actually doable. Wow. Um, th through 4G at trees. Better than um, Texas? Actually better than Texas. Yeah, I don't know how their 4G was getting through, but she screenshot and sent it to me and it wasn't connected to the Wi-Fi. It was on her 4G. That's sick. Um, so streaming is actually doable if you have the right data plan, cool. um, which we can get. So, so that's a possibility in the future, guys. Um, so we might, uh, kind of donate to help them build some of these, uh, cabins or, or research facilities. And then we basically can use them whenever we want, that's um, and sick. can just go down there and spend however much time we want to spend. So that's that might be um, coming up in the future, but we need coronavirus to go away first. Yeah. Um, but guys, maybe because we, can, until then. we could stream some bird banding, maybe some bat ID, maybe some herp walk, some some whatever. jungle camping. Some jungle camping. Thank you, sport, so, for the five dollars. So not only camping, but jungle camping. Yeah. So more bugs. Oh, the coolest thing. I, maybe it wasn't the coolest thing, but one thing that just stuck out to me from staying at trees was that night that they had the sheets out for the moths 
You know yeah, that's so, and I mean not just the moss. Yeah, but yeah, so many bugs. Yeah, so in the rainforest, there's the the biggest biomass percentage of biomass is insects, right? Like the they dominate the the tropics. Mm-hmm. Um, there's bugs of all shapes and sizes and kinds everywhere. Um, and at night, you can put up this white like bed sheet, and above the bed sheet, like you hang it out uh, in an open area, and then above the bed sheet, you have um, like a spotlight, and you put the spotlight onto the uh, sheet, and it attracts all the bugs to come to the sheet, and then they come to the sheet, and you can either capture them to look at them or take pictures while they sit on the sheet, attracted to the light. And um, the night that we did it, I I don't know how many. Um, oh gosh, my mind just went blank on the the bug guy's name. What was his name? David. David, that was it. David. Yeah, I David. I think counted. Name. Yeah, David's good enough. Um, <laughs> I don't know his last name either. Um, I didn't know his first name. Uh, David counted like a hundred different species of insects that night. Like it was insane how many different bugs he saw. And there's some really the the rainforest has some like really creepy alien looking bugs. Um, you got some cool pictures of one. Did you get some pictures with that rhino beetle? That rhino beetle was awesome. Yes, I did. I this chat. This is the one I told you guys about. The entomologist that like when we were eating, he would bring vials with bugs, and I would just like ask him a, like a million questions and bother him the entire breakfast every day. <laughs> it was he was so really cool. Sick. Oh, he was great. And there's so much to know about bugs because there's so many more species of insects and arachnids uh, than there are of mammals and birds and reptiles. Like there's so much more to know. And for most people, including me, it's a completely alien world because the the environment that they live in is stuff that we overlook all the time, like little fields of grass or um, some leaf litter on the ground. Like it's stuff that we would just step on and keep walking, but in each like little square, um, you know, six foot by six foot square of that he would spend like a little bit of time and collect like hundreds of bugs. Oh, it's insane. When we went on this, we went on a, I don't know if it was a herp walk. We went on a walk at night in the jungle and I had my, I had my headlamp on and I realized after walking for like 10 or 15 minutes that all of the like little tiny ball reflections that I was seeing back at me, I thought that it was water. I thought it was like water droplets on plants. Mm -hmm. And after I checked, like I went up to them, like each one of them, and I looked at them and they were all spiders. All of them. Yeah. Wolf spiders or or something. Um, Yeah, wolf spiders. It took me like 10 or 15 minutes to find out that every, like every little reflection I was seeing was eyes of of wolf spiders. And I counted hundreds in like a few minutes of walking. It's insane everywhere. That's one of my favorite things to show people the first thing, time they come to the jungle yeah. at night is you go out at night, you walk into the jungle like five feet, you put your flashlight on the ground, or it's just you, like... you point it at the ground, <laughs> and it's just a thousand spider eyes looking back at you. Yes. Yeah, um, the floor just moves with wolf spiders or the ground. Spiders the size of wolves. No, no, not, no, that's not no. <laughs> why they're called that. <laughs> They're um, they're really really cool predators, and they are venomous to people, but not like deadly venomous. Like uh, I've been bit before, and it's like they just leave like a bad bruise. Exciting uh, frogs donated fifty dollars. Whoa! Thank you so much. Thanks, dude. That's amazing. Fifty dollars, awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wolf spiders are really cool predators, and we did see a tarantula, a baby tarantula. Yes. It, it was in your video, I think. Yeah. I don't um, know, maybe. Um. Yeah. Did uh. What's his name? Steph? Stefano? Stefano. Stefano. Did he do any mm-hmm. filming of insects? Has he done any filming? Do you guys want to see oh. his a video? Because you sent me one of his as well. I sent you one of his, yeah. Yeah, let's watch this. We should get him on the podcast, maybe. Yeah, he's really cool. I'll play it. It's so good. The quality is nuts. Here we go. Yes, this is all trees. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. We're going out birding. It was raining pretty hard. I didn't think we'd actually be able to go out, but the sun came out and now I'm hoping to beat last week's record. Well, record for the vlogs. It was 30 species. It was really weak. I know we can do better. Before we actually go out, we bird banded this morning for about four hours. 
I think I'm gonna do this before every vlog. I'll just show you guys quickly which bird species we caught in the morning because it's a pretty typical day for me to just band from basically 6 a.m. to around 10 or 11 a.m. and then go out later in the afternoon to actually film some birds. So this is what we got this morning. We're starting to get a lot of migrants. It's really exciting. Hope you guys enjoy. See you soon. Rigby, thanks for the 10. Same. I love being able to see that every morning when you get up. So nice. Yeah, that is insane. Yeah, that filming is insane. He does a super, super good job. Yeah, I think that's his like main thing that he does. Like, I think that's his job, uh, and he does some of those videos for fun. But I think that's like his main um, thing is doing uh, uh, videography and some photography. So he does a really good job. He's really passionate about it, um, and he's really cool to hang out with. Maybe one day we can get him. Um, yeah, I remember when we, we talked to him, me and Matt tried to talk to him about YouTube and stuff, and um, I think Matt was too much for him, because he, he's a little more introverted. <laughs> when we were like, trying to have a yeah. conversation, he was just like, oh yeah, I like YouTube. Well. <laughs> but he was very nice, and he does a really good job. Um, yeah, I think one of the best, not best, that's a strong word, one of the most interesting um, things about the trip was watching, like, people's reactions to Matt. Um, For sure. People watching people react to Matt was one of the funniest things. Yeah. Like David's reactions to Matt, Stefano's reactions to Matt. Um, yeah, it, it was it was pretty entertaining. I don't think they knew what to expect because then they would talk to us and then they would see like we're like really interested in the, the wildlife and talking about science and they talk to Matt and he's yelling at Jump King in the corner. I specifically um, remember when we were doing the bat ID I was like, I was leaning over Vanessa's shoulder, like looking at the bats and I was asking about like reproduction or so, I don't know, something that I was interested in. And then Matt came over and touched the wing of the bat that she was IDing and he's like, it feels like a condom. And she was like, yeah, yes it does. <laughs> well, what's worse is David was recording video for his like middle school students when Matt yelled out, it feels like a condom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leonard, thank you for the $10. Um, yeah, he was the entomologist guy who was, who was recording to show his, his class, and Matt kept swearing and saying, I don't know, farming good ones and whatever. So It's in my vid. There you go. Um, the problem is he was farming with, like, no one watching. I think it's just, like, instinct at this point it is. that he just tries to farm no matter what. Like, there's no one around and he's farming. I'm genuinely interested on it. If you were to put him in a room by himself, if he would, like, farm good ones. I've heard him, like, talk to... I've heard him... He doesn't talk to himself that much, actually. But I wouldn't be surprised if you put him in a room by himself. If you started farming for the wall. Yeah, actually. Um, Bite, thank you for the $5. Appreciate it. He is a permanent source of entertainment, nonstop. Yes. yes he actually. definitely made the trip more interesting than it would have been, so... Him and John both. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was great. And then once we get the cabin, I guess, and go back, we do have to do the, the jungle sh camping stream with both of them. Yeah. Because that would be too much gold to miss. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, 
Matt actually, well, John, I wasn't that worried about, but I didn't know him that well. Matt did pretty well, um, like with everything. He didn't, he didn't complain much. He didn't need much. Voldemort, thanks for this ten months. Yes, yeah. he, he did really well. Oh, you know one that made me think. I don't think I ever told you this, and if I did, then I completely forgot. But um, when I was doing my PhD project, it was in Belize, but in like a few hours south of where we were. And it was at a similar type research station, but the research station, like trees was right off the road, right? Like it was really easy to get to. Mm -hmm. This research station was like 10 miles off the road and you had to like hike in with all your gear. Like it was like um, more wildery. Yeah. Um, and at this research station, while I had all of my cameras out, um, recording all of the the mammals that would walk by because that was my project was a mammal project. The um, the research station got contacted by the TV show Naked and Afraid. Everybody knows that show, right? Mm -hmm. um, did I tell you this story? No. Do you know Naked and Afraid? Yes. Okay. So Naked and Afraid actually filmed, and you guys can go see this episode in Belize at the research station that I was at with my research equipment, my camera, while I was there. So I got to watch the Naked and Afraid behind the scenes while they were filming it. Um, is that and it fake? was, it is so fake, guys. Really? I'm so sorry. It's so fake. How I was so? so disappointed. It was actually fake. So if you go find this Belize episode, um, it, it's really, really funny. So there was like a, the, the guy in the episode was like this big, like military, you know, big tough guy. And then the girl was like kind of small and quiet, um, but like a survivalist. Um, and so basically how it's, how it worked is they came in with like this huge team of people. Um, and they had uh, like a medic, a first aid person. They had the people doing the video. Um, and then they asked Conti, you met Conti, my, my Mayan friend. Yes. You remember him? Mm -hmm. And Conti is the head ranger at this place. So he's kind of like the, the wildery person in charge there. Mm -hmm. And they got Conti to build their shelter for them. So they didn't even build what? their own shelter. In the show, they make it seem like they build their own shelter. But Conti actually built their shelter for them. Completely fake. Um, and then the guy... Uh, Conti also gave them like tips on how to survive here because he's like the true jungle man. Yeah. Um, and so Conti said, don't go out by the river. Do not go out by the river because the sun, you'll just get absolutely annihilated by the sun because there's no shade out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the big uh, tough guy was like, oh, I'll do what I want, whatever. Um, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And he went out there and he got sun poisoning so bad that he had to tap out and quit on day three. He made it three days because he got sunburned so bad. So if you go watch the episode, you'll see this. And now you can know why that happened because we told him, uh, especially Conti was like, don't go out there and do this. And he thought he knew what he was doing. And we had to helicopter him out. He was so bad that he couldn't be driven out. So they brought a helicopter to the jungle and flew him out of there. And then for the rest of the three weeks, the girl was by herself um and she actually made it the whole time so i mean nobody's really by themselves in that show even though they right. make it seem like you are um but she actually made it uh, how so far good away for her. is the crew and like help and stuff are they like right they're, there yeah they're right there. oh my god <laughs> it's so fake it's so staged like they're maybe 50 feet away like they sleep out there with them but what? like 50 feet away yeah it's it's so fake it's so fake oh uh, Conti slept out there with him just to like so that if they needed like his survival help like he's there um, Jeez. and then the consequence of that because I had my cameras everywhere for my research project oh, no. I have like a month full of naked woman walking in front of my research cameras no! and so what I know it's awful um, sweaty thank you for and, the 50 Oh, thanks for the 50 bucks, dude. And so, um, and my, uh, to go through my pictures for my research, I have my students go through them because there's tens of thousands of images, sometimes hundreds of thousands, depending on how much data to be collected. Mm -hmm. And so my poor students have to like sift through the naked people pictures um, oh my God. in my data. So my data got really interesting that summer, but you guys can go find uh, this episode. 
um, somewhere. I don't know if they ever did another one in Belize. It might be the only one in Belize. But if you go watch it now that I've given you like the context, it'll be much funnier. Um, <laughs> in I don't fairness, know if you can like. It would it be horrible to be naked out there. Absolutely horrible. Like, I'd never do it. You could give me a million dollars and probably wouldn't do it. Like I going out in a long sleeve shirt if it wasn't the right material, like everything would go through it. You know, I can't. I can't imagine not having clothes on. It sounds fucking just horrible. And walking. Like, barefoot out there is horrifying. Like, that's scary. The worst part, so Naked and Afraid isn't about surviving 21 days. They don't eat. Like, if you watch any of the episodes, and I haven't watched the show in years now, they don't actually eat because it's so hard for them to catch anything. Mm -hmm. So the show, the whole show is who can sit there and starve for 21 days without giving up. Um, that's if Almost every episode is, is that because they never find food. Um... And so they like every single person that does the show loses like 20 or 30 pounds because they just don't eat. Um, oh. And then if you looked at it's probably hard to see from the the TV or the, the camera. But that girl, what she you, Matt had like 100 bug like mosquito bites per leg. Yeah. She probably had a thousand. Like oh, she bet. was just absolutely covered in bug bites. That, I mean, like she probably had like bot that. flies everywhere. Uh. Oh my gosh, do yeah. you guys know what, Isaiah with $50, thank you so much. Do you guys know what bot flies are? Oh, thanks, are? dude. Chat. Dobbins, bot flies? Tell them what bot flies are. No, oh, bot flies are cool. Daych with $100. Whoa, dude. Thanks, Daychi man. Daychi won. Gee, the last three donors were $100, $50, and $50. Thank you guys so much. Holy shit, guys. Oh, sorry. Kid stream. Okay. My big. Um... But yeah, so botflies are really cool. They're parasites. And if um, on my last stream, I haven't streamed in a few days, but on my last stream, I talked about parasites a little bit. Um, but basically what happens is they um, lay the eggs underneath your skin. Um, so they land on you. They, they make a small little incision that you don't really feel. And they lay their eggs underneath your skin. And then they incubate inside your body. So you're the host for their incubation. Um, and then when they're ready, they um, burrow their way out and then they release. Um, so actually it causes no harm. Like they're not dangerous. Um, like you don't, you're not going to die from it or get sick from it. It's you're, more the concept, I think. But really, if you think about it, you're just providing a nice home for an animal in need, right? Like you're just, I, I mean, it's not a big deal. You're like free. you. you I mean, so yeah, anyways, but it's really easy to get rid of them. Like once you find out that you have like the larvae inside your arm or wherever, yeah, okay. you, you just put duct tape over it and then that... they suffocate and die. Ah, okay, that part too. So you know, you see it, like you can see the right. larvae in your skin. And then if you try to pull it out, tell them why you can't pull it out. I'll let you. They have like a skirt, chat. It's basically like like the... The same shape as a skirt, so if you tried to pull it out, you can't. <laughs> okay, sorry. They have like barbs, kind of like a kind of think of like fish hooks, where they like won't it won't come out. Like they'll just hook into you. Yeah. So the only way to get them out is to kill them before you take them out, and you put duct tape over their their little home on your arm or leg or wherever, and it suffocates them. What's it called again? Yeah, it's called a bot fly, and they're they're pretty. Okay, really not common. not. No, yeah. They're really common. They're really common. I, I, okay. Well, I say they're really common, and I've never gotten one. Right. But a lot of my students have gotten one, which I don't know how I've avoided this. I don't um, know. But, I don't know why alerts aren't showing up. But Bernie, thank you for the fifty-eight dollars and eighty-nine cents. Oh That's man, insane. thanks, Bernie. Um, but yeah, so I've never had one, but I've definitely gotten my students to have them. Um, I felt bad about it a little bit, but <laughs> one of one of my students was a girl, and she got it in her head. Yeah. like on the top of her scalp and they had to shave like a little bit of the hair um around like at the top of her scalp to oh. kill it so that I, I felt bad for that one um bernie but in, she was a good sport about it in bernie's dono asked what if you get a bot fly in your eye is that possible i don't think that's possible right like if, if you felt something it? land on your eye you would like blink and or close your Easy. eyes like i I don't think it would have the opportunity to like lay it in your eye. Just close your eyes. Yeah. What was it? Didn't wasn't John freaked out about the parasite? Jo 
John's freaked out about everything. John's True. a hypochondriac. He thinks he's going to have every bad thing ever happen to him. Botox with another hundred dollars. Dude, what the heck? Thanks so much. Botox. Oh my gosh. Okay, but John John was concerned. That's two hundred dollars for Botox. The streamer insane. John yeah, was concerned dude. about Holy a crap. specific parasite that made you blind. Do you remember which one I'm talking oh, about? Oh, the kissing bug. Yes. Oh my gosh. Can you explain it? Yeah. So okay. So kissing bugs are really you. While I'm explaining, you want to bring up a picture. Okay. The the bug is no. The bugs aren't scary looking. Um, I just so don't want kissing... to take pictures of their faces. Oh, okay. It looks so much like an assassin beetle. Yeah, yeah, they're in the same family, actually. Um, so kissing bugs are really, really common in the tropics and in the uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, they're they're you wouldn't think like if you saw this, you would think it's just a normal assassin bug, unless you're like an entomologist, mm -hmm. um, which I am not. Um, so what they do is they um, Okay, so in the tropics, a lot of people um, have houses with thatch roof, uh, and thatch roof is like the, the grass roof, um, and these bugs love to live inside of that grass roof. Um, and so why they're called the kissing bug is they um, will land and they will basically bite you on your lips while you sleep, um, and then that's where they infect you, and they give you... Um, basically the disease that you can contract from that, um, can have a lot of really bad side effects and it can give you blindness, um, and a lot of really bad other things without going into too much detail. But yeah, so they're called the kissing bug because basically they, uh, infect you from your lips. Um, and most usually they fall on you or jump on you when you're asleep. Um, <laughs> and then they're really prominent in the tropics because they live in the thatch roof that a lot of people have in their houses. Yeah. The but other... yeah, John was absolutely terrified of getting bit by a kissing bug. Yeah, like while he was sleeping. The other thing, it was like, I think it was after, it was either after the first or second night that you told me and Matt to to tuck our sheets really tightly. For some reason, you yeah. didn't think to tell us about that the first couple nights we were staying there, which is fine. But after no, I did think there, about it. I just wanted to wait till night three. The reason he told us to do that is because scorpions will get under your bed sheets. But he just wanted to wait until night three to let us know that that was a thing. But if it happened, then it would have been fun. I don't know. It never happened. And, and not <laughs> just scorpions, actually, uh, but uh, the wolf spiders, too. Um, both of them like to get up under your sheets. Like, so you, we always tuck our bed, like, really tight so that they can't get up under. And then, like, you stick your legs in there to go to sleep, and then you get bit. But uh, the wolf spiders aren't really a concern. Like, they'll bite you, and it'll hurt, and you'll have, like, a bruise. But... The, I, I ended up telling you guys because the our luck, you there's different species of scorpion, but some of the species of scorpion that live in Belize are actually deadly. Um, so I, I, yeah, so I, I kind of felt bad, and then I told you guys, but no harm, no foul. There was no scorpion. Uh, but most of the time, the the species, uh, most of the species of scorpion are are safe. They're not. Who's making the noise? Who do you think? Um, Conch, thanks for the eleven dollars and legendary with the twenty dollars. Um, Which one is it? It's Buffkin. Oh, it's Buffkin. Okay. Yeah, he's still upset because he got a sub. He got sub key fluids this morning. I think <laughs> he did not like that. Um, Conch said, "Can you get a can you get a vaccine against those bugs?" I think he's talking about the kissing bugs. You you cannot. There is nothing you can do. Nice and legendary. It's kind of like Lyme disease. If you get Lyme disease, you have Lyme disease. It's kind of similar. Legendary said, tell Dobbins to keep up the good work. Oh, thanks, dude. Nice. I'll um, keep memeing in chat. There you go. Good work. Um, okay. That was a tangent. We talked about Yeah, that. sorry. That a, yeah, no, I went off good. I forgot that I never told you the Naked and Afraid story, which is one of my favorite stories, and then it came to my mind, the so thing, I don't think chat minded, though. They probably enjoyed. The thing about the camera traps and, like, seeing the naked woman in front of them, that sounded familiar, but I didn't remember the whole... I never asked about it being, like, fake and whatever. Dude! Do you mind if I feed the raccoon while we're talking? Go for it. Okay. Um, content. We Content. You want to talk about... I, I mean... Obviously, the other stuff that I had I won't read your quiz questions, but if you want to segue into what you were going to talk about, that's, that'd be great. 
Yeah. Did you get the quiz questions that I sent them to you? Yes. I mean, I did send them to you, but did you see them? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so a couple of people messaged me. Um, so as you guys know, I, I teach uh, college courses and one of the classes I teach is um, global ecology and conservation. Uh, and some of the topics that we're talking about in that class, people were interested in and people messaged me during my stream or after and just said that they wanted to hear me talk more about some of this stuff. So I was just gonna talk about it with you guys. Um, and so from here on, I have a few quiz questions at the end for you guys. Um, so for here on the quiz questions start. So uh, if you wanna take some notes, this would be a good place to take the notes. Um, and the quiz questions, even though, um, yeah, the quiz questions won't be hard. I'll just say that they're not going to be crazy. They'll be they'll be same difficulty as as Maya's quiz questions. Uh, no differential equations, um, no linear algebra, no matrix calculus, none of that stuff. So you're safe, unless of course that's your major. Then I'm sorry because you would have done really well in the quiz. Um, so anyways, so what I, I'm going to kind of talk about something that I was talking about. All right, hold on. I'm going to watch feed real quick. Bucket. He's so cute. He's so cute. He's so small, though, dude. I know. He's really little. Why? Like... Yeah. So anyways, um, so what I've been talking to my, my own class about recently is um, some of the major effects of climate change and then how coronavirus has seemingly slowed down some of those effects and then sped up some of the other. Um, so, well, yeah, climate change, Kekona. Um, I'm sure that's Don't say the next... that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know that I know it's coming, so I just want to be ahead of the curve. Climate change, Kekona. Yeah. Um, anyway, so now that you guys have gotten it out of your system, that you, um, yeah, everybody that like feels like spamming Kekona, just go ahead and get it out now. Like, feel good about yourself. Um, so anyways, what we were talking about with climate change is we were talking about um, the climate change impacts on the ocean. Um, oh, yeah, coronavirus fake too, Kekona. So you got to, yeah, it, Kekona applies to both coronavirus and climate change. Oh so it's a, it's a two for there. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I don't know why, but that emote always makes me laugh. I, I, maybe it's because I'm from Alabama and it oh, actually true. feels so real. Yeah. Because yeah, like... True. Like you guys are memeing, but like where I'm from, the, the K Cone is actually like my neighbor. So <laughs> um, it's funny on a lot of levels for me. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know if my redneck accent comes out a little bit, so you guys might hear it some, but it's it's mostly gone. SMK two minutes ago tipped uh, twenty dollars. Thank you, and Queen tipped five dollars. I'm sorry, I missed those things. Oh yeah, I don't. I'm not seeing them, and I don't. I have the stream muted, so I don't hear the sound. But no, thanks, guys, so much. Um, so anyways, we were talking about, in my class, we were talking about um, impacts of climate change on the ocean and on coral reefs. Do you, are you guys familiar at all? Like, how many people here, and you can just like yell in and chat if you've ever had an ecology class. I'm curious how many people have like actually taken like a college level ecology course. Is anybody? I don't, I haven't taken an ecology course. You haven't taken an ecology course? Oh, Man. No. Okay. I, I, my okay, I see like three. Man. I see like three yeses. All right, cool. Well, I see actually a few more yeses. Cool. Okay. So um, what we were talking about in class is the impact of climate change on coral reefs, which is really, really, really sad. And Maya got to see a little bit of this when we were in Belize. Do you remember when we went snorkeling and you saw some of the bleaching at one of the reefs we went to? Do you remember seeing that? Oh, yes. I don't know if we talked about it that much. So what coral bleaching is, is um, basically, okay, actually, I'm going to back up. So coral is an animal. A lot of people think it's a plant, um, but coral is actually an animal. Um, and coral is a really, 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 really cool animal. Um, and it's really, really highly evolved in its ecosystem to do um, a very specific function. Um, and so each branch of a coral um, even the tiny, tiny little branches are basically independent brains of the coral, but still part of the same coral animal. So a coral is made up of thousands and sometimes millions of what's called like a polyp. 
And that polyp is its own individual arm with its kind of own individual brain. Um, and it's really, really cool. And each of these individual polyps um, kind of do their own thing. So at night that they come out um, and they kind of fan out like, um, like what it looks like, like leaves or branches, and then they will grab fish coming by or something else. And, and that's where they eat small little uh, crustaceans or other things. Um, but since coral is an animal, um, it has to regulate its own body temperature similarly to uh, what uh, humans do, but maybe even more similarly to reptiles. And so basically they have to stay, corals have to stay within a very specific temperature range. So if the water gets too cold or too hot, the corals will die, right? Because they're outside of that temperature range. Um, so the way to think of it is, if our normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, if a human got to like 104, 106, 110 degrees, that human screwed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very similar concept with coral. So with climate change, what's happening is as the oceans warm up, um, it's basically raising the body heat of these coral. And so what happens is the corals, um, the way that the corals live is they have a very specific symbiotic relationship with this photosynthetic um, algae. Um, and so on top of the coral are all of these little algae, and they're basically food factories for the coral, right? And so the, the, uh, the algae on top of the coral photosynthesizes and produces its own food, and then the coral basically benefits from that, um, photos, or from that uh, symbiotic relationship. And so what happens is when the coral overheats, it kind of has a response to it like if a human got a virus or a disease and its natural immune system is trying to find a way to fight that virus or a disease. And so its first response is to send all of that photosynthetic algae out of its body. And so when it does, it turns solid white and that's called bleaching. So what you see left behind is just the bare bone, basically the skeleton of the coral without that algae. So in its last like moment of defense, um, it does the worst thing it can possibly do, which is get rid of its own food source. But it's it's freaking out, it's running out of options, it's overheating, so it gets rid of that food source. Um, and so that bleaching event, um, they can, if you see like a really clean white um, color about the coral, then the coral is still alive, but it's no longer growing um, it's no longer producing anything or reproducing. It's just kind of in a vegetative, alive state. And sometimes they come back from that. Um, and then if you see it kind of like um, looking like it has like rotting algae on it, then that coral is like already dead. So anyway, so that's kind of like the life cycle of the coral, what coral bleaching is. But anyways, so with climate change, the oceans are warming and warming and warming. And um, if the oceans warm too much, Bleaching happens too often, and basically the coral die, and all of the coral will die at some point if if the water gets too hot. And that threshold is like two degrees Celsius, uh, give or take, for different coral species at different parts of the world. So if the water raises just two degrees Celsius, um, then those coral um, will probably all die. And the bad thing about that is uh, coral are basically the rainforest of the ocean. So 25% of all the biodiversity in the ocean uh, comes from coral reefs. So if you lose coral reefs, then you lose 25% of pretty much all of the biodiversity in the ocean, which basically makes the ocean ecosystem collapse. So in our class, in the class that I was teaching, we were talking a lot about how climate change is affecting oceans, how it's affecting coral reefs. Um, anyway, so I, I wasn't really paying attention to chat, but I saw some people asking questions. But um, one thing that a lot of people don't know, and Maya, I don't know if you know this, um, did you know that most of the oxygen that's produced on Earth comes from the oceans? Most people think it's from the rainforest. Yeah. Did you know that, Maya? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. I tell that to my students, and most of my students didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So almost 70% of all of the uh, oxygen produced on Earth comes from the ocean. Um, and so when you wipe out an entire ecosystem from an ocean, that productivity of oxygen will likely go down. Um, so there's huge negative consequences for um, humans and other land ecosystems because of what happens in the ocean. Um, so it, it, it's really, really, um, it's a really, really bad thing. Um, and then 
one thing actually i'm going to pause one second i'm going to come back to that but a few of that a few of those things will be in the quiz and then i'm going to pause and we're going to talk about something else because it crossed my mind and then we'll come back um my do you have the uh paint up? uh i do have paint can we open okay. it okay yeah okay what do you want me to do remember what we talked about yes there's a reason why and then i'm going to come back Okay. I'm gonna. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? You can go first. <laughs> I, I'm. I'm telling you first, or I'm drawing first. Wait. What do you mean you're telling me? You okay? Because we were gonna draw the. We were gonna do the Pictionary with the animals. Yes. Do you want to draw first, or do you want me to draw first? If I draw first, are you telling me what to draw? Yes. Oh. Okay. Sure. I'll do it. Okay. All right, guys. We're doing. Um. We're doing. And this kind of plays into what I'm talking about because I'm going to pick some, uh, and I'm going to text it to you, Maya, okay. so chat doesn't see. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a, a fun interactive game where we're going to play kind of Pictionary with you guys with animals, and um, I'm going to send But they're not going to be her... like dogs and cats, chat. No. I'm going to send her the animal she has to draw, and then we're going to see who in chat can guess the animal first. <laughs> um, okay. So I'll, we'll be paying, I'll try to pay attention to chat. And I'm going to see which of you guys can actually get it first. I'm going to start with easy animals, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll ramp it up from there. Okay? Okay. All right. So let me, let me get here. All right. I sent Maya her first one. I'm going to have to look up a picture, I'm sure. I haven't... No, you're not. I started with easy oh, animals. Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought... All right. Here we go, chat. Ready? Um... Okay. All right, I've got to really pay attention to chat. Oh, they already know. Somebody already Did got they already it? get it? Somebody, Somebody got, it. got it. Llama, nice. Okay, so we started easy. All right, that was a test one. Who got llama first? Will got it first? Will, you need to help right, me see who Will. gets it first. All right, so now I'm going to make it harder now that we're really good at this game. How do I erase on paint? How do you erase? Isn't there a, a eraser button? I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, Will, you didn't get it first? All right, Will. You're killing me. I trusted you. Controls. I guess that works. Okay, see, I do need a reference picture for this. Hold on. Guys, I'm picking up the, the I don't think they're going to get this. Dominic. They will get it. They will get it. I no, trust chat. This chat. Is not she a thinks smidgen. you guys are dumb. She's calling you dumb. This is not a chat. smidge. Okay. Chat, she's calling you dumb. I believe in you for the record. <laughs> chat. All right. Here. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. All right, ready? Shit, hold on. Um, see, I can't even draw. <laughs> yes, you can. I believe in you. And I, more than believe in you, I believe in chat. Thanks, Stalin. You're a good friend. Um, okay. I know it doesn't look like s they're saying dog. Um, I have to really, it's going really fast, so I have to pay attention. Nobody, Nobody Dobbins, said it yet. I truly don't think that somebody's going to get it. I really Somebody's going to get this? Chat, I believe in you. I really believe in you. Somebody was really close, but didn't get it right. Somebody was so close. You also have to understand that I have to draw it well enough. Oh, somebody got it. Somebody no got it. way. Yep, yep, yep. Hold on, hold on. Oh, my I God. Got Wait, I saw Mama Dripsta? It was a, man, na a mandrel. <laughs> Mama Tripsta got it. How? See? Well. That, took like, that took like 10 seconds. You do not have faith in chat. All right, chat, since you guys are too good, you're too good, we're picking up the difficulty. Two, two five head chat. All right, chat. I'm sending Maya the next one. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, chat. I believe in you. I've always believed in you. All right, here we go. Uh, we just see your face. Thank you, Dobbins. I was very focused. 
All right, I gotta really pay attention now. Oh, it's going so fast. That's the giveaway. Nobody said it yet. Really? Nope. I feel like this one's so much easier. I see a lot of beavers <laughs> and a lot of pangolins, a lot of raccoons. None of these are correct. Armadillo, no. All right. I knew I picked up the difficulty on this one, but I still believe in We've you guys. We've talked about these on stream. Uh, I think. No cheating. That's Just not cheating. Your... I've talked about so many animals on stream. Here, I'll draw. Let your art do the talking. Okay. I still haven't seen it. Oh, somebody got it. There we go. Uh, Protect got it. Protect. Kawadi. It's a Kawadi. Good job, Protect. Or Protect. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. Nailed it. Amazing. All right. You guys are too too smart. Too smart. We got to pick it up even more. Oh, my God. Pick it up even more. All right. Let me, let me get ready for my next one here. A what? A kawadi. A, did you show the picture of a kawadi? Yeah. Okay. They're really cool. Yeah. Um, the procyonid. Yeah. Making up animals? No. Okay. <laughs> you drew a beaver tail? No. This is a beaver tail. To be fair, your kawadi tail was a little fat. <laughs> but I agree, that's a better beaver tail. All right, guys, we're getting we're, we're picking up the difficulty even more because you guys are too good. Okay. You again have too much faith in them and in me because you, you look, said I had too much faith so in them the similar. last three okay, times. Okay, but Dobbins, okay. this this, uh, this looks like so many things. Well, right now it looks like a line, so just draw. Not an antelope, guys. I see your antelope. That's what Not I mean. a spring buck. That's, That's a good I mean. guess. Not a spring buck. Not a gazelle. Water buck. Space voyage. Got it. Space. See, you had that took them ten seconds. You keep having no faith <laughs> in them. No I'm faith. Sorry. It just it look. I'm so bad with antelopes. It looks like a bunch of different antelopes to me. So I would. But you have like, like fifteen hundred people's worth of a hive mind. True. Like you're underestimating chat so much. True. All right, all right, chat. Chat, we really got to pick up the pace here. All right. This will be the last I'm, one for I'm, me, I'm, and then I'll do them for you. Oh, chat, my drawing is like one one hundredth of Maya's, so I'm really sorry for what you're going to see. <laughs> but hold on here. Let me get here. Um, what would be a good one? All right. All right, guys. Chat, if you guys get this, I will be so thoroughly impressed. Actually, here, to make this fun, I'll do the um, the Maya quiz dono to the first person that gets this one. Big time, chat. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> okay, stop cheating. That <laughs> okay. gives them information. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, Jeez. Uh, okay. Oh, shit. What have you done? Stop! I'm trying! Chat, just wait. <laughs> chat. Chat, I couldn't get this right now, so don't feel bad. Okay, dude. Give me a second. It's getting there. Don't! Wait, did somebody say it? No. no oh, what? my God. I, I thought somebody actually said it. Holy crap. No. Don't say animals you know she knows, like a bearded dragon and a Komodo dragon. You know that she knows what those are. Smiling. 
Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm seeing some better guesses now, but you're, no one's still gotten it. Uh, Actually, the drawing is good. The drawing's good. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. She did a good job. For paint um, and a mouse, I'm trying my best. Yeah, still no one's gotten it. I, I'm, I'm paying close attention, guys. I'll, I'll let you know. Oh, somebody got it. And it's already a sub. Who? Uh, Rubik? Rubik! A Tuatara. A Tuatara. Wow. Wow. All right, Rubik, since you're already a sub, I'm going to have to, you're going to have to tell me where you want a gift to. Or what you want me, just let me know what you want me to do with the five bucks. All right. All right, so I'll tell you guys about Tuatara because Tuataras are really, really cool. So they're their own. Um, so in reptiles, you have uh, you have turtles, you have snakes, you have lizards, and then you have tuatara, which is its own thing separate from everybody else. A tuatara ha is its own classification. Um, so they're the only species inside their own classification inside of reptiles uh, because they're so different from lizards that they're actually not they don't fall under lizard. Um, and the reason that is, is because they've basically, they're, they're what's called an evolutionary relic. Um, and there's a lot of examples of evolutionary relics, but basically they are unchanged for like 60 million years. Um, they have kind of fallen their own um, evolutionary path and not really um, converged with other lizards. So they have evolutionary traits that are very, very different than the other lizards. And so they are their own category of reptile. That's cool. That's not a tuatara. That is not a tuatara. <laughs> it's like a kiwi or something. Okay. Um, oh, God. Is it my turn to draw? Yes. Oh, no. All right. Are you ready? Do I need to screen share, I guess? Yeah, screen share, and then I'll put you full screen on the other. Okay. Give me a second. And the Chat, first one... I am really sorry. You're going to probably get stick figures. The first one will be very easy. I forgot. I didn't see that Bernie donated another $43.87. Bernie forever said it's a lemur. Thank you, Bernie, for doing that. Um, he said donate. Oh, um. Ra, Strange. Ra, ra, I forget who it was. He asked for a $5 donation. Rubik. Okay. Nice. Here we go. Um, he, I'm sorry, he asked for what? A, a $5 dono? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, dude. Good job with the Tuatara. Very impressed. Actual five head. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, it's an mean, easy, easy one first. Wait, I actually have a draw pad. Does that work in paint? Let's see. Oh my gosh, it does. Wait. Come here. Wait. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right, Woo, so Gino there. with twenty dollars. Thank you. Oh my gosh, what kind of eraser is this? How does it get bigger? <laughs> How do you make the eraser bigger? Just do control Z. Control but that's too much work. Fair. I did that. Alright. Um okay, yeah. first one. Uh easy one. Um, um here you go. Texted you. Oh wait, why is that so Oh. Ah, better. Okay. Did you text me? I did. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, Chad, I am so sorry. I don't know how to draw. You better okay. be able to draw us on our worst screen. <laughs> okay. I'm, I can't. I'm laughing too hard now. All right, hold on. Wait, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> you, you haven't even I'm done anything. Too. I'm not gonna do much. Okay, hold on. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Dobbins. Okay, wait, oh, wait hold on. That's, wait, hold that's on. Good, that's good, that's good. There we go. <laughs> now, now we got it. Hold on. Oh, oh, hold on. Somebody already got it. Somebody already got it. Grab it. I didn't have to do any more. Sevix. Sevix. Well done. It's well so done. hard to draw with your mouse. What the heck? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, guys, you've got, you know, you're screwed now. Like, that was my rabbit. Like, it's only downhill from here. Yeah. All right. Ready? 
think it's gonna get more difficult? Oh no, Chad, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Chad. What? No! <laughs> That's not that Dang bad, it. come on now. But for, uh, the animal's not bad, the drawing is bad. All right, okay. For two seconds, just mute your <laughs> mic, woman. <laughs> My hand's moving too much to draw. <laughs> Whoa, he has elephant feet. It's not an elephant. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> he's happy. Did somebody get it right? No, I mean, they're in the no. they're close. They're close. That's all I've got, guys. That's all I can do. No, help them out. You can do more. You can do the body. Woo! Good guesses. Motivational lizard. Nice. Wait, hold on. Um... Not a oh, salamander, but... not an axolotl, not a gecko. <laughs> what what is that? Is that a mushroom? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh guys, okay, never mind, never mind. Not I'm a... laughing too much, <laughs> and then my hand music. moves when I laugh, so I can't do it. Ignore this, guys. No. <laughs> Did no? Oh, somebody got it. Oh, oh, no? wait, no, Rubik. Rubik got it again. Rubik. Rubik, I think you're he's too the good. First person that said it. Well done. See, Gila guys, monster. that's clearly a Gila monster. If you can't get that, then there's oh, no helping you guys. Oh my god. Here, wait. I'll pull right. up the pictures. Wait, Lee. Oh, you... it was clearly a. Oh, oh wait, I can go back. I'll it was clearly you. a Gila monster. Like, how do you not see that? That's like it's identical to a Gila monster. Nice. Look at that. That's the same. They're the same picture. What? They're the same picture, okay? Okay. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay. Um, this is why I'm a scientist, not an artist. <laughs> okay, let me hang on. Look, his ta he was happy, okay? He had a happy tail. All right. Okay, ready? Just cut me some slack, boys. I mean, as ready as I'll get, I suppose. I just want to see you draw this because I think it'd be funny. Really? Funnier than what I just... Yeah. No, seriously, that's so hard. All right, I need to bring up a picture. Oh, you brought up pictures because I want to see the details. Yeah, I love pictures. Okay. She's not on your Because I can show. close my eyes and see it, but I, a picture definitely helps. Fat Ricky with the $10. Thank you. Oh, that's my friend Rick. What's up, Rick? Nice. $830. Actually, no, it's. All right, so holy crap. Okay, guys, here we go. Let's do this. All right, I'm going to actually try to use my pen. See if the pen works better. It's probably a lost cause either way. Chat may need hints for this one. I'm not sure. Well, with my drawing, they will. True. Let me know when you guys get to the point where you want a first letter or, like, some kind of classification. Zoil! Hi. Wow. Actually, I already see it. I, you can't make me laugh because then my pen moves. Oh wait, wait, wait! That does that count? I think that counts. Wait, what? Millie said water bear. Yeah, that's right. And then Dion said tardigrade. Hell, I'm the pro artist. Look at this. Yes. Holy Chad. crap, Chad! Pro Amazing. artist. I, I didn't even have to so draw the rest. This what is, is just a... the concept drawing. Like, y'all didn't even see its final form. It's a, it's a micro animal. These little guys. Look how cute. I was drawing the top left picture, by the way. Identical. They're the Wait. same picture. Y this one? Oh, yeah. You even have to ask? It's the same picture. <laughs> That's nice. That's good, yeah. It's the same. It's the same thing. Yes. Okay, um... Next one, chat. Let's do a little hard one. Because we have two more. Well, a hard one? That one was hard, but chat's just No, too they good. got it so quick. Well, that's because my drawing was actually pretty good, you know. Uh oh. Um, 
Okay, shoot. I'm trying to think of something that would be funny for you to draw. Because it'll be bad. Here, this isn't that hard, but I don't... Here, okay. Calm yourself in chat. Woman, all right, okay, all right, okay. <sighs> John, what up? Wait, John's here now? Yeah. Uh oh. Thanks, sorry. All right, let me find a good reference image, guys. Let me summon my my inner artist here. All right, chat, we ready? Put your thinking caps on, chat. I need you for this one. Wait, oops, am I donating $50? $50 bucks? from Radio Surge. Thank you, Radio. Holy crap. Thank you so much. All right, Chad, I really need you on this one, okay? I, I really need you. All right, so let's let's focus up here. So I'm going to, this one's going to take me a second, so just, just bear with me, okay? I'm going to have to mute Maya because she's going to laugh at me. All right, here we go. It's not a table. Control Z. Control Z. All right. There we go. I learned. This thing is so hard to use. Can you be quiet? Whatever you're doing. I'm not doing shit. Maya, I, I need silence from you. Will got Chat. it. Will got it, but he put a Fields Dane man before it, which makes me think that he wasn't confident. But Will did it. Will, I'm not even done. It's actually pretty good, Dobbins. <laughs> it's really good. Good job. So somebody said Kinkajou? Yes, Will said it. Wait, so now, so Google Kinkajou, it's the fourth picture from the left on the first row. It's It's the same picture, guys. You don't even have to this check. One. It's the same. It's the same thing. Guys, is that not the same thing? It's the same. Identical. Wow. That's really nice. Guys, I worked really hard on this. The tail is really I like how symmetrical it the tail is. Oh my gosh, this one's so good. Are you ready? Oh no. Alright. Hit me. Wait, 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 wait. This is not what I was looking for. It's not what I was looking for. Okay. Um. All right, ready? Yep. There you go. All right, chat, Seriously? same rules apply for this one because it's probably Seriously? it's the hardest one, I think. Um, so if you get it, either a sub, a gifted sub to somebody else, or I donate $5. All right. um, I need to come back here. Chat, I'm going to draw this really, really fast, OK? I'm going to need you guys to be on the same wavelength as me. I'm going to draw it super fast, and it's going to look really good. All right, everybody ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thomas! <laughs> Thomas, you put it on your screen, you idiot. <laughs> That's my drawing. Oh, my God. Okay, dude. Chat, what is it? 
Daigo, there we Squid. go. Wow. Squid. Look how good that drawing is. You can't even tell it's a drawing. Squid got it. It looks just like the picture. Squid, you're already a sub. Would you like a sub? It wasn't Squid. Who was it? I thought it was Squid. Oh, it was Clamshell. Clamshell, are you a sub? If anybody wants, I can frame this and mail it to you. Just let me know. Not a sub. All right. Here we go. Now you just have a Saiga butt on your screen. Am I nice. changing back to camera? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, guys. Y'all are too good at Wait, this. We're going to have to do this again because that was actually fun. I'm not going to lie. Botox! What Botox, things? dude! What the heck? No, Botox gifted the sub before I could do it again. It's like the third time you said that. Thank you, Botox. Okay. Congratulations. He always ninjas those. True. He's so fast. Okay. Um, wow, that was incredible. Do you have all the things covered for the quiz? Oh, let me check the quiz questions, actually. Thank you. Let me see what I sent you. Hey, your friend Ricky just subbed. Thanks. Thanks, Rick, for subbing to her instead of me. <laughs> That's tough. Feels bad. Actually, I don't even have a sub button yet. Oh, true, okay. yeah. He's not even an affiliate yet. By the way, I'm Dobbins, not even affiliate yet, guys. Dobbins Stuff Streams. Uh, command guess. Dr. Dobby. What was... Hipster horse with the $10. Guys, we are so close to $900. we are at $890. Um, so, actually, I, I like it better this way. So, how many quiz questions did I send you? Do you have them ready? You sent me five, right? Oh, either four or five. I'm trying to look back at what Maybe I sent you. Maybe it was four. One, two, All right. three. You sent me four. So... All right, I sent I sent her four questions. Two of the questions I covered. Two I didn't cover, but that's on purpose because I want to see what you guys know without me telling you. So you get two easy questions and then two questions that oh, I didn't tell you the answer. I see. Okay. Let me. I want to see what you know without me spoon feeding it. I have to I have to put it all into this. I have to like copy paste it in it, you know. All right. Hope you studied, guys. Chat. Did you all take notes? I'm just glad there's no map. Yeah, I'm a true professor. I do a pop quiz with no warning and no... Kind of um... weird, Dobbins. What? That's kind of weird. That's normal. That's what we do. We're assholes. We do quizzes without telling you. Don't give you the answers you need. Nice. Okay, here we go. Let me... This is actually like school. Half of the test is not covered in class. I'm giving chat PTSD. You can tell she's a good streamer because she was prepared. What do you mean? With this quiz? What do you want me to do? I have to do this quiz every time like this. I'm kidding. Although I did send you the questions before. Uh, I'm sorry. I should have done it while we were talking. I should have just ignored you. No, I sent her the questions at 10.05 chat. That's on me. I'll do that the next time. <laughs> so, Dobbins, how's your dog? Which one? Um, I have the three dogs one. and Steve. Steve, how's Steve? Steve's awesome. I showed uh, chat Steve last time well, yes. uh, when you on my first stream. I saw that. Yeah, Steve's awesome. All right, here we go, chat. I think we are all set. Look at his rate my professor paid. I'm not going to do him like that. Yeah, please don't. I mean, it's good, but please don't. That's weird. Okay. Um, chat, here's how the quiz works. Let me just show you really quick. You got to grant access. If you don't grant access, I won't see your name. It'll say contestant number, blah, 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 and then you can't win the quiz. Okay? 
Allow access. Viz is linking the thing. No, I didn't. Right. Okay. If you win the quiz, if you're not subbed to me, then wait, that's the same Viz. Okay, you threw me off. Congratulations. Again. If you are not subbed to me, I will gift you a sub to my channel. If you are subbed to me, you can either choose to get a gifted sub to whatever channel you want, or I will donate an extra $5 to Trees um, today. Wait. I missed a bunch of donations. Tell with $10 three minutes ago. The Real Bradders with $25 three minutes ago. Cassie with $10 and Rubik with $10. So we're at $945. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry that I Thanks, missed Thanks, guys. This. Um, that's huge. Thank you. Um, 20 seconds per question. Four questions this time. Are you guys ready? Didn't prepare. Didn't prepare. We didn't take notes. Start quiz. Here we go. It's happening. Whether you're ready or not. Sending to players. Two questions that Dobbins went over, two questions that he did not go over. You just have to be smart, chat. You just have to know. You just have to be smart. What percentage of the biodiversity in the oceans comes from coral reefs? Is it 5%? Is it 50%? Is it 25%? Or is it 15%? Well, I see lots of easies in chat. I'll tell you guys this one. Congratulations, if you got it correct. Bernie's done. Oh, no. Late guess from Sweaty Tripod. The correct answer is 25%. Ooh. Actually, more people got that wrong than what? right. What? I went over this one, guys. Classic. Guys. Classic. Wow. <laughs> Lionel Messi. Messi's in the league. Contestant number 841 is in second. And guess what? It does not matter. Next question. Got a perfect score? The hell? How much does the global average temperature need to rise to effectively wipe out all coral reefs? Is it 4 degrees Celsius, 0. 0.5 degrees Celsius, 2 degrees Celsius, or 10 degrees Celsius? I also went over this one, chat. True. Stop putting the answer in chat. Why are you guys doing that? By the time they put in the answer, if somebody answers it then, they'll get like virtually no points, right? Actually, true. Messi, you're kind of nuts for, for that first question. Um, yeah, I saw Botox putting... 10 degrees Celsius in chat. I see what you're doing. The correct answer is 2 degrees Celsius. Most of you got that right. Good job, chat. You're redeemed. You're redeemed. Well done. Okay. Who's in the lead now? Dan! And Squid. Holy moly. Dang, so I got a perfect 20 on that one, too. How does this even happen? How do you get a perfect 20? Takashikura is yeah. Takashi got twenty thousand on that on that question. Amazing. Next question. Which country emits the most CO two in the atmosphere every year? Is it the U.S.? Is it India? Is it China? Or is it Russia? Okay, lots of you look like you are getting that correct. Fernando misclicked. The correct answer is China. How do I change my guess, Saj? I'm sorry, buddy. That's tough. Yeah. It can't be the US, Kikona. We don't emit. Non emitters. China. Well done, chat. A lot of you got that right. Oh, wow. Good job, guys. I That's honestly good. thought a lot of people would fall for the USA bait. Yeah. Stop Kikona saved correct. us there. Why why stop saying correct? What do you mean? What what am I saying wrong? Oh my gosh. How do you do this? Total score squid is in the lead. Before you do the last question, guys, the last question is hard. I am sorry. But I have faith in you. Maya didn't believe you would get to to, to Atara, but you got it. I have faith in you. Messi, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Last question. Which of these gases don't contribute to the greenhouse effect? 
Nitrous oxide, helium, water vapor, or methane? I would have gotten this one wrong. It's actually not that hard, to be honest. I just didn't go over it. When people say it in chat, you say correct? What? It's helium! See, chat, I was, I'm right there with you. I would have said water vapor. Sure, I'm not gonna lie. by the water vapor. That's what I was saying. Mm. But good job. Almost, almost as many people picked helium. Who did it? Cindy! Nice. That's a good score. That's really good. That's nuts. Boreal, congratulations on that question. All right, Cindy, what do you want? Where is he? Donate. You got it. Pal. We'll donate another $5 here with a smile. An even nine fifty. Easy. 774th Rubik. Wow, that's so impressive. Good job. Yeah, put in another, um, I don't, do I donate to my own PayPal? I don't know. I'll, I'll guys, I'll put in five. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's the easiest way. Lot, lot can add $5 to the amount without you doing yeah. it, so it'll be like, you can just add it on after. Okay, Locke's going to add five, so it'll be 955. Here we go. Never mind. Okay. Tell, Tell tipped $55, and I just tipped $5. So we're at $1,005. Tell, thank you for the 55. What the heck, dude? Guys, thanks so much. This, this is going to mean so much to Trees. Like, they were so excited when I told them that we were going to do this uh, charity stream for them. Yeah. Um, so this will mean a lot to them. Thanks so much. Big time. Um, okay, well, we found stuff to talk about. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, because you, you had a good guest. Command guest, if you'd like to, if you'd like to follow uh, Dobbins on Twitch, he streams now. Go support him on Twitch, um, Instagram, and then Twitter. He just made a Twitter. So yeah, I made a Twitter, but I haven't posted anything yet. But I'll, I'll eventually I'll start posting when I'm going to stream on there. But I haven't done it yet. There you go. Stream Owens broke, so I can't add five dollars. Okay, guys, the total is a thousand and ten dollars. Dobbins, you should go live. I'll do the outro here and then post you. I'll see you guys soon. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for the donations. It was a lot of fun. Yay. Okay, chat. So, Dobbins is going live. Oh, I see Messi. Okay, I get it. Um, Dobbins is going live, so we're going to host him, um, and he's going to continue doing a charity stream for Four Trees today. Uh, good podcast. That was good. It came, it really is in good timing, um, because Trees really, really needs this. We've done one, uh, we've done one podcast, I think, for Trees before, um, but now is, is a really good time to be supporting them. And I'll keep you guys posted on, on what happens with the investing and, um, what happens with, that was a backhanded compliment, true, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I do appreciate it. I guess. Um, I'll keep you guys posted with uh, with what happens with the investing and, and whether or not we decide to go in on a cabin together uh, in Belize, but that would be really, really cool if uh, we have somewhere where we can go whenever we want. I can stream from there um, and you guys can see a bunch of that content. And it really is like when I started streaming and we talked about uh, me doing IRL content and me taking Twitch chat like out into the jungle, you know, like we talked about that before, and I never really thought about it as being a possibility, but it, it's really starting to look like it, it may be. So that's sick. So we have that to look forward to. We have raising two freaking red tails to look forward to. Um, and then we have raising these two raccoons 
uh, to look forward to as well on stream. Um, one of them, you guys have got to really root for Buffkin. Okay, I'm doing my best. Sequin, thank you for the $20. Uh, root for Buffkin, I, I'm doing my best here. Uh, he's getting he's getting fed at least three times a day formula. He's, he's getting uh, probiotics once a day. Sub Q fluids once a day and anti nausea medication twice a day. I'm really trying, so uh, I don't know. We'll see, but I I do want to be super like honest with you guys and let you know that he is not doing great. Um, he's not doing as well as I hope. So I'll keep you guys posted. Plus, thank you for the eleven months. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted. So there's that, and then we'll start very soon with with Dip and Dot on stream. There are a lot to manage right now. Dip is not a lot to manage because he's still like nesting. Sfaney, thank you for the $20. Um, Dip is just chilling because he's like basically nesting still. And then Dot is fledging. So he's flying a little bit. So as much as I wish they were the same age and we could just go, uh, we could do them all at the same time, I have a feeling that uh, Dot is they're not necessarily going to overlap the schedules that I have for them. Um, I think, I think Dot is moving a lot faster than, than Dip. It's, it's amazing what, what, uh, difference a week makes. So we'll get, we'll get to watch a lot of that. Okay. And you guys will get to watch a lot of that. I mean, I'll have that on stream. So Dr. Dobby is live. Perfect. So, thank you for a thousand and fifty dollars because there's an extra five dollars that's coming from Dobbins. Um, who will donate that to Trees? That's amazing. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for participating. The Pictionary thing was actually really fun. I'm glad we did that. And uh, there's always lots to learn from from Dobbins. There's always lots to learn from the podcast guests. So, Twitch is an untapped reservoir for doing good, and I appreciate you guys being here to uh, be a part of that. I will see you on, uh, I will see you, what day is it? Friday. I'll see you on Monday for an IRL, okay? Um, there may be the YouTube video coming out Monday. It may be coming out Friday. I'm not sure yet, um, but I'll let you know. Monday, I think we're going to take the raccoons out into Matt's backyard um, and put a little bit of water out there and, and see what they think about being outside. So that's my plan for the IRL Monday. Uh, I will see you then. I think that's it. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Go be good to Dobbins. He's continuing the charity stream. Um, thank you for your donations. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Okay. Bye.